Welcome back. It's podcast time, friend. We're at the TM New Home Connection, and we are here with a guest. I feel like I'm super giddy because I feel like this is a celebrity. A Houston celebrity is in our building. And I, I don't it. have his LinkedIn account pulled up, so I'm just going off of... Is your LinkedIn updated? No, I feel like it's not. It's not. Well, I would pull it up, but I won't if it's no, not updated. No, but... And we won't judge you. We have <laughs> the creator, the founder, the man that had the vision for Chesmar Homes, Mr. Don Klein, here with us today. Thank you. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. Yes, well, thank, thank you for taking the time out to join us. We really appreciate it. We oh. do. It's end of year. We know it's crazy busy, but we're pumped to have you. But I have a question. So I did say you're a celebrity of Houston because I truly feel like that. Um, but are you a native Houstonian? Tell us a little bit about the Don Klein. Well, no, I'm not a native Houstonian, and I'm not really a celebrity either. Yes, you are. Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, I actually uh, grew up in uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and lived the first 30 years of my life there. Huh. And um, I... Uh, Transferred down here with Ryland Homes back in 1978. Um, oh, my goodness. As a controller for Ryland. Okay, so that was going to be my question. How did you get into New Home Sales? So it started, or new construction, it started up north with Ryland as a controller. Yeah, well, actually, I was a, a CPA in Baltimore. I worked for a CPA firm for a couple of years and decided that wasn't exciting enough for me <laughs> and uh, was looking for another job and the job with Ryland came up. Uh, I'm actually as an internal auditor. So I started with Ryland up there in around May of 78. And uh, I apparently didn't do a very good job uh, at that. And I was <laughs> recruited to be their first regional controller to come to Texas in uh, really October of 78. Okay. And oh, so quickly. Yes, quickly. And wow. uh Actually, um, I did that for about two years. I did it after a year I got bored and told them I was either going to leave Ryland or they were going to put me out and do a different job. So I stayed another year, and then I went out into the field to build homes. Um, you were in construction. I was in construction for a very short period of time, about six months. Okay, because I can't see you doing construction. Right. Well, I could actually would have liked to have done it for a couple of years. Really? Um, oh, it's beautiful to build a home and to see what you've done and come into fruition and then watch a family move into it. That I can um, agree with. No, that's, that's a, that. a wonderful, wonderful thing to see the progress. But apparently I didn't do a very good job at that. I was promoted <laughs> to be an assistant division president. And uh, in, uh, I think, 1982, I got my first division with Ryland, which was in Clear Lake City. Okay, so this was all still with Ryland. Yes, it was all still with Ryland. Okay. I spent about seven, just under 17 years with Ryland Homes. Wow. wow. So then, okay, so when was the, tr then you transitioned to another company after right. Ryland. Right. And then you just said, forget it. None of this is for me. I'm just going to make it my own way. So that's kind of funny because um, that's not exactly what happened. <laughs> Me. And I, is, this how, is this how Durant imagined it happened no, in this her is, head? Uh, <laughs> you know, there's no embarrassment here on my part. I'm embarrassment's an emotion, and you can control your emotion. But I ended up getting fired from Ryland. And um, they had changed their uh, CEOs in 92, and I actually lasted a couple years with them. But they turned over all their regional presidents. I think there was six of most of their division presidents. And then I was one of the last. I think after I left, there was maybe four out of 20 six DPs left at Ryland. So then I went to work for Lennar. I worked for them for nine and a half years. I managed to get fired from Lennar. Um, and uh, <laughs> the, uh, no, it really is quite comical. Um, and then I had a really good offer to go work for another company. And um, they were going to give me a phenomenal bonus at the end of the first year. I had it all in writing. And I went home and I looked my wife in the eyes and I said, why would I go to work for someone that's going to, throw this kind of money at me that doesn't even know me. And we, decide, we decided to start Chesmore House. Mm. Um, in 2005. 2005, yeah. So we left, uh, and it's another kind of um, interesting story, but I left there the middle of February, give okay. or take. Um, the, I gave myself a month, and by the middle of March, 
because I'd gotten the offer from the other builder in like two weeks. By the middle of March, we decided to go out on our own. Um, by April 22nd, the documents were done. We signed the paperwork. I had brought in investors. On that Monday, I think it was Monday, May the 5th, 4th, somewhere around that first Monday, we hired our first people. Oh, my um, goodness. And in the first week of June, we started building our first times. Um, it was Really, that is so that's quick. Really quick. He didn't mess around. Uh, well, I mean, with the background, though, having come from construction and right. management and having done it so long, you, you knew what you were doing. And you knew the way that you wanted it done. Um, I Yes. Um, I knew people. Yeah. Um, yes. I knew who to hire. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Christy was with me at yes. Lenar and all of our first people came from, most of our first people yes. came from people that I know that wanted to continue um, working with us. Yeah. So we had really the pick of the litter. Yes. I should say. He had cream of the crop when he created yeah. Chesmar, for yeah. sure. So we, we started up, we had the systems. Uh, my strength was operating systems and, sure. and, uh, and people. So, yeah, we hit the ground running. And that first year, we, um, this is from memory. Uh, Your closed, memory's doing great so far. Yeah, we closed, I think, 19 homes. Um, we sold 40 some and, um, we really, uh, at one point we started to worry a little bit, a couple months into it, but by the end of the year, by the end of the year, we were in the number one and number two communities in Houston, the Woodlands and Cinco Ranch. Oh, and I think that's a testament to who you are. Cause that's one of the things that I've always found so interesting coming from new home sales is you work in a lot of master plan communities yeah. and you see a lot of big name builders. Mm -hmm. And even when I was at Chesmar, no one knew how to say it. They didn't know where, who the builder was, but Chesmar was in the lineup of all the heavy hitters in your top notch communities. And I truly believe that's a testament to you and your reputation and your skill set. Uh, and the relationships you had built in the industry. Yeah. Well, real estate is a relationship business. hundred um, percent. It's mm -hmm. um, who you know, um, yes. and it's a really small community. It is. Um, we've all heard about the six degrees of separation. Yes. <laughs> if I don't know you within six levels, yep. I can find yes. somebody in yes. the real estate business. It's one. It really um, is only if, one. If I don't know you, I can pick up the phone and find somebody that knows you. Absolutely. And it really doesn't even matter what state you're in or no. what yes. city you're in. Yeah. Um, so it's a relationship business. The people that uh, at both Cinco Ranch or Newland at the time mm -hmm. and the Woodlands knew me very well. Um, we'd always succeeded in those communities. Right. Um, we were really always open to new ideas. We, we helped them. They help us. Um, so it was really a, a mutual deal. And we got to a point, quite frankly, with um, the Woodlands where Chesmore was the number two builder in the Woodlands. Um, yes. They're not selling homes anymore. They're out of no, lots. Oh, I know. Yeah. But you had a stronghold there yeah. for a, long, a time. long time. A long time. And that was, I mean, that was your home base yep. too. So when you moved to Houston, you built in the Woodlands and you're still there? Yep. Yep. Well, Ryland was in the wood, building in the Woodlands when I joined Ryland down Okay. There. And they had uh, laid the groundwork. And then, of course, at Lenar was uh, probably even a more interesting story or just as interesting because when I got to Lenar in 95, they lost money that year doing 300 homes. Mm. And, uh, oh, my goodness. The next year, we did 300 homes and we made money. And the last full year I was there, we uh, did 4,200 homes. Um, we were the third largest building program in the country. Um, that was absolutely an amazing um, rise. I think the next closest builder in Houston was, um, well, we won't mention names, but they did about 2,500 homes. <laughs> okay. So Len Lenar with Village and mm -hmm. I think the U.S. brand was gone by then. And then, but New Home had come into the picture. New Home for, had been um, in the picture. Mm -hmm. But the bulk of it was um, Lenar. Lenar business. Lenar mm -hmm. did about 2,500, 2,600. Village added 1,000. And New, Mark, or New Home's the rest of it. Um, so yeah, so that, that was a truly amazing story as well. And quite frankly, that, uh, I know it's a little arrogant, but that helped with my reputation. Well, sure. I mean, that's people knew you for running a yeah. good company and being a good leader. That's, that's, and I can speak just from yeah. being in a position to where you've been my leader. Um, but so when you had the epiphany, you went home, you spoke with Janet and you said, "Never mind. we're just gonna, we're going to do this thing. Mm -hmm. Did she have input or how did you come up with 
the name Chesmar. That What's was my the, next question. Yes, is who what, came up with the name? What is the story? So yeah. the story, of course, if you want the the real um, fake story, you go to the website. And there's a legend of, Tres- of Chesmar. And they have coloring books, I believe, and still in the models. Books, yes. I, I used to yes, have one of the coloring books. The coloring books, books yeah. that tells the story. Yeah. Yeah. So when we were looking for a name, there were some um, kind of rules that I wanted. Uh, probably the most difficult was to get an easy domain name um, at that point. Um, there was a lot of domain names that were out there that were goofy or long. and Yeah. Um, so we wanted to get an easy domain name. We also needed something that was not uh, registered in the state of Texas that was unique. I wanted it to be early in the alphabet because a lot of these communities list their builders by. Um, oh, that's, that's true. So much on the community this. That's billboards. why it's David Weekly instead of Weekly Homes. Um, <gasps> and. Um, so I wanted to get early in the alphabet. Oh, he just gave a little bit of tea there. That um, is tea. That's something I have never tea. thought about. I didn't um, think about I've never thought either. about that. Okay, keep going. So uh, those were the things I could, oh, it, was, it had to be a name that could easily be used for either entry-level homes or for custom homes if we decided to do it. it could be so used. no no association emotionally right. to it. Uh, I didn't want to use my name. Right. Um, yeah. That I wanted it to be pretty generic because I didn't want it to be my company. I wanted it to be our company with all the people that are there. So I was looking at a map one day, and my wife grew up in a place called Chestertown, Maryland, on the eastern shore of Maryland. And there was a place on the map, it was a Yahoo map, and there was a place on it that said Chesmar. And the uh, place didn't exist. It didn't exist. Wait, but it was on the map? It was on the map, and it didn't exist. And we actually drove it, and there was nothing there but maybe 12 or 15 homes along the Chester River outside of Chestertown. And I said, Chesmar, hmm. that fits all my rules. You don't know this? You don't know no, this story? I, no, I did not know that. So, I mean, I knew the coloring book yep. story, but... So, the so, fake story? Yeah. <laughs> the fake story. Um, that, but it's a funny story. The uh, With Chester and Maria mm-hmm. and um, how they founded it. But anyway, so since it didn't exist, it didn't really exist, and it's off the map after about... I don't know, five, six months later, it was off the, the map. They had taken the name off. We think it may have been in a real old platted community um, okay. of a dozen or so homes, um, but we don't know that for sure. Um, yeah, because we drove in there and we drove and we looked at the homes. Anyway, um, so that's how we got the, the uh, Chesmar. I homes. love that story. I really like that story. I, I, I don't like... think many people know that story. No. Probably not. They, I always tell them to go read the legend. Yes, um, which <laughs> the folklore, the folklore, the folklore yes. Chesmar. So since it didn't exist, we needed a legend, and that's how the legend was written. I like that story. Yeah. Yes. I like it more than the coloring book yeah. story. Yes, it's it's interesting too because you can't go there. You know, right. you, you can't go to Chesmar. And it was on the map though at the time that he right. was reading a name, like it was and now it's not now on it's the map. Not. Yeah, no, it was just meant yep. to be for you to see it. Yep. So, would you know how to get back to? Chesmar, Chesmar, Maryland. If oh, yeah. Were... No, I know exactly where it is. Really? Yeah. You should, like, yeah. create a map and put, like, an X on it. Yeah. No, you need a picture <laughs> of you and Janet there with yeah. a gone sign. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love how you yeah. guys do that, too, instead of sold, gone. Right. Yes. It's, again, like, with the um, emotional associations with purchasing a home. Yeah. Um, the words just from sold to gone is mm-hmm. it's just a different feeling when you read it. And we, I, I've always loved it. Yeah, we just try to be unique and stand out. And one yeah. of our sales guys came up with that. And um, we said, okay, we'll do it. Yeah. We like to take ideas from people. I love He's that. very good at that too. Yes. He likes interweaving just everyone else's ideas and making them all come together yep. as one. Well, I'm well, sure you had a lot of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Not all of them were woven in, but yes, we like to come up with yeah. ideas. But one of our values is to have fun. Yes. And uh, we uh, we have a lot of fun in doing what we do. You know what we didn't do? What? And I wouldn't know, I wouldn't know it, but we didn't do the, I want to call it the Pledge of Allegiance for Chesmar. <laughs> the mission statement. Oh, yeah. it's mission well, statement. Every time we visit you guys yeah. for a meeting, that's how they start the meeting. Yeah. And I feel like we... Mm-hmm. We haven't said grace, you know. Oh, no, that's no okay. over dawn. But, we didn't. Yeah. Sorry. Do you have it memorized? Uh, Do you have it memorized? Um, let's see. Oh, we we're putting him on the spot. <laughs> no, we are dedicated to being a builder of choice for our customers, contractors, and trust and chess moorings. Offering the best new home experience with quality workmanship. We do this with Chesmar pride, integrity, warm smiles, a friendly attitude, and an enthusiastic, enthusiastic spirit. spirit. 
He yes. does it. Yes, of I course he does. I also love how you guys call yourselves Chesmarians. Yes. It's very unique. Again, just As the town, the mm-hmm. township. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I just thought about that because the people from Chesmar maybe called themselves Chesmarians. Yes. From Chesmar, Maryland. Yeah. Oh, they could have. But it yes. doesn't exist, so they can't be called Chesmarians. Well, when you mm. go start a town there, okay. that's what you can call your, <laughs> your people. <laughs> Well, I, I love that you guys call everyone that works there Chesmarians. Do you call the homeowners Chesmarians too? Yes. Because like, they come into the family? I it, did. I didn't, but that's okay. You can. Yes, they become part of the family. Yeah. So where did that come from? Was that something that you coined or someone just said one day? Things pop into your head. You don't know where they come from. Yeah. <laughs> so That happens to me a lot. Yeah, and then you forget. So yes. It happens to it me a lot. Probably popped into <laughs> my head or somebody else's head at some point it's just so unique when i think when me i i didn't work there when when i think of chesmar kind of as an outsider looking in it's one of those builders i would say it's the only builder that just feels so humble and so mm-hmm. welcoming yeah. i don't know it, friendly. it's just a fi- we're friendly friendly, friendly yes. is a really good word yeah. i mean even just like with, with gone versus sold and chesmarians versus you know, just sales consult, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Um, I, I love learning all this about you. It's yeah. it's really great information for me, and I know that the viewers are really going to enjoy yeah. this too. Yes, well, people spend a lot of time at work. I mean, it's eight hours a day, forty hours a week, yeah, fifty hours a week, and uh, it's really nice to have a nice, friendly place to work mm-hmm. um, where people enjoy coming in and enjoy yeah. the friendships of people next to them. And you know, you can hopefully see it when you walk into our sales offices. Yeah, <clears throat> people sure. get up to greet you because there's a lot of sales offices. You walk in, people just kind of look at you. Oh, they do, yeah. they do, yeah. And, and even when Don would, he would visit the model homes on the weekends, and he would get up and greet people walking yeah. in and visit with them. But yes, there were many a times where the weekends he'd just be out yeah. checking things out and That's talking like- with. The family that reminds me of you, though. Whenever we go and visit builders, yeah. um, th- they'll be preoccupied. The sales consultants, oh, they'll yes. be preoccupied, and somebody will walk in, and Durrett is the first person <laughs> to walk up to this, How this, can this we potential help you? home buyer and yes. be like, yep. How are you today? Yes. <laughs> How can we help you? So, but he's very good at that. So, so I see where you got it. I see where you got it yes. from. Yeah. Yes. But so speaking of things that have popped into your head and all imagining everything, could you ever have imagined that you were sitting there with Janet, there was a town on a map, you're going to name it Chesmar, this was 2005, and now fast forward, we're at 2023, could you ever have imagined that this is where you would be? No. And this is where your company would be? No. Really? No. No. I'm not really that big on goals. And, you know, we we grew because we offered opportunities for people. And the only way you can offer opportunities for people is to grow. Mm-hmm. And um, it, the growth just came. And uh, But no, I could never. But, you know, same thing at Lennar. I never dreamed we would be from 300 to 4,200 homes. Yeah, wow. Um, I know. It's just amazing. So, no, that was not part of my deal. We I live life to have fun and we take it one day at a time and we do some forward planning obviously you can't just get of course one place to another without doing some things right but we always managed to grow within our means we never got out over our skis as the uh cliche goes um we uh i'm mm-hmm. very big on managing the mm-hmm. books and the records and the money mm-hmm. um and uh we dealt with banks that absolutely loved us um and they were able to they lent us money and we had investors that were really good and really patient and actually one of the other neat things that we did was after we started within a year we had broke even because in starting a building business you lose money for a while yeah and of course. We lost money for about the first six months and then made it back the second six months and then never lost money after that we made money every year oh my goodness including during the recession 2008 9 yes we were, we were profitable yeah so why do you think that is what, what were you guys doing that you think set Chesmar apart to where you became profitable so quickly and continue to be profitable? Um, so there's a lot of factors involved. Number one, uh, getting into the number one and two communities was really good. Because mm. even true. even during the recession, uh, those communities um, did better than a lot of the, certainly a lot of the second and third tier communities. Right. So having positions in those communities, because when things are 
ugly, you're still getting transfer buyers in and you are, people moving yeah. in. And, Houston's a unique market yeah, in yeah. that regard. And they're mostly going to the larger master plan communities. Yes. So yeah. having positions in there helped us. And the other thing is we never, again, we never got over our skis with buying land or lots, or and we didn't have that much in assets. So as the value of certain things went down, and we had the value of some of our lots go down, but it was very small. Mm. Um, so we were able to... Uh, um, to live within our means and do well during that time period. That's good. I like so. it. So now we're, like I said, 2023. Yep. And a lot has happened with Chesmar, the growth, the success. And there was then the information that came out that you were had decided to take your private family-owned company Chesmar, the town that didn't exist, and you created it into a company that was wildly successful and that it was no longer going to be private. What was that decision like for you? Um, Part of everyday business. Um, First of all, I never looked at this as a um, family-owned company. Um, Really? Never. I looked at it really no differently than I looked at Lennar or Ryland. This was a company I was in charge of it. I was going to do the absolute best I could, and I was going to make decisions that I thought were prudent. Yeah. Um, and I looked at this the same way. So that we had about, um, well, we started an ESOP plan, employee mm-hmm. stock ownership plan, and the employees owned 15% of the company. And then a lot, And at the end of the day, I had three outside investors. Two of them passed away, and we refunded the, we bought up their investment. Mm-hmm. So I ended up with one outside investor for a small part, And then we had uh, about 20 people that were senior management that also owned a piece of the business. So I always looked at this uh, deal as um, our company. Right, sure. That worked there. Um, And the decision was really um, the, uh, we needed to monetize the deal. And if something had happened to me, Mm -hmm. there would have been a huge um, cash event on the company. And I really wanted to take that risk away. Yeah. So uh, selling the company to a public company was uh, seemed like the best way to go right. at the time. And that's what we did. Okay. And it's been pretty seamless from yeah. talking with the sales consultants and yeah. folks out in the field and at corporate that so far the transition has been seamless. And then we'll see that kind of evolve into 2024 and yeah. whatnot. It, it, and it will evolve. Um, you know, sure. People always get frightened about change, but I remind them that things have been changing if just more since we started it. I mean, as you grow, things have to change. Well, the only consistent is change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you put new people in, some people leave, and you have systems that have to change with size and yeah. and all that other stuff. So things will continue to change and they'll continue to evolve. And, you know, people either deal with it or they don't. Right. They, they make choices. Going back to the beginning in the 70s up until now, what would you say is your proudest moment in new construction? Was it huh. in the beginning? Was it with Chesmar? Was it with Lennar? I'm just, I'm curious. Um, so actually one of my proudest moments, I would go back to the Lennar days um, with uh, Village Builders. Yeah. Um, Lennar bought Village at the end of 95, beginning of 96. And Village was never known for making money. Um, they built phenomenal homes. Their construction was good, but they didn't understand how to make money. And so in uh, 2001, I think that was the year, because I took over, Village Builders reported to me in the year 2000. In 2000, we had another person there that was a long-term village person that ran it, didn't do as good a job as I thought. Um, and I took it over, and I ran it personally in 2001. And I got a lot of pushback from the guy I was reporting to. Um, he kept wanting me to do things that I wouldn't do. I'm a little obstinate. Um, and, uh, but at the end of the year, and I, I remember this, we made, the, the village builders had never made with under the Lennar system 10 million. It was always a couple of years under 10, some less. In 2000, they made about 5 million. In 2001, we made almost 18 million. Wow. Um, on, we actually closed 200 homes less than the year before. And uh, that's probably a year that I remember the most. Um, and then, you know, the last <clears throat> two years at uh, Chesmar have been phenomenal. 
they've been off the charts for us. Now, a lot of that was helped by COVID, quite sure. frankly, and the, the, the sure. whole market changed. And yeah. we had a lot of inflation in homes. Um, so that was, uh, you know, driven by some outside forces. But even this year when things were sort of settled down, um, we were having a phenomenal year this year. Yeah. So I would say those are, are my most memorable um, years. Those are great things. Yep. And you have a good team. Yeah. And when you go out, and this is also in your office, but for the people that don't know, what do you normally draw? When I what? Your, do you, this is going to, yes, you know what I'm about to say. Oh, you draw. My business model. Yes, this is his business. Oh. Have you ever seen Don Klein's business model? No, but I thought he was about to draw like an animal or something. So his business model, so I remember. I, I, I can't draw, but I'll do this. So when, why do people go into business? We'll use you. Why do people go into business? This is a test. Why do people go this into business? Yeah, test. typically. <laughs> to make money. Right, to make money. You get, you pass go. Okay, you yes. pass go. So um, I would tell you that that's not my business model. That I go into business for Pretty happiness. Happy. Now, it's more complicated, so the test is not stopping. <laughs> And I have no problem if anybody steals this, by the way. So there's four demographic groups of people that have to be happy. What are they? The employees. Employees. Don't overthink this. So far, you're getting an A. I price. am? Yes. Keep well, going. <laughs> employees is one. Um, uh, the management team? Leadership? Nah. They don't no? Count. We don't, we don't, <laughs> we don't. <laughs> Uh, the, the customer. The customer. Customer. Yes. We want the customer. <laughs> we want the customer to be Customers. happy. Okay. Two other groups. And pay two more groups. Customers. Um, I, I want to say something like your your stockholders, your investors. Okay. Yep. okay. Good. One more. Oh gosh. One I, more. Come on. Give price. me a hint. Give me a hint. You can do this. Your business partners. Okay. Well. So this we is. Now. Did I pass? I got an eighty. Oh, uh, you got seventy-five percent. Um, <laughs> So what do your employees want? You're both employees. What do you want? Yes. Work-life balance. We, okay, that's yes. one thing. What else? We want to be happy. Okay, keep going. Money. Money. Yeah. What else? Success. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's maybe 10, 20, 30 things that people want. All that's a part of it. You want to work with people you like. Yeah, um, sure. You want to work, have a good work environment. Yes. Um, you, money's a part of it. You yeah. want to pay, be paid a fair salary. Yeah. Um, work for people you like. You want to be working in a business that you can be proud of. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's a big um, one. Yeah. Okay. So what do your customers want? And we'll look at the home building business. What do the customers want? Uh, quality product. Quality product. What else? They want to feel like they're taken care of. Taken yeah. care of. They want to be heard. Yes. They definitely want to what be else? heard. A good incentive. No. <laughs> They a, want a fair they, price. A fair yeah. price. Yes. 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 Most of our business partners are, are contractors. They want homes ready when they get there. Mm -hmm. So money's a piece of all of it, um, but it's not the primary piece. The primary piece is to be happy. Um, my job is to make sure there's a balance because you can't overdo it. You can't pay your employees a million dollars a year each. It won't work. You can't give your customers... $300,000 homes for $100,000. Yeah. So my job is to keep this in balance. And the other thing that I would tell you is that this employees is number one and customers is number two. Why? Because if your employees are not happy, yeah. then they, they won't take care of the right. customer. If, if mom, It'll leak they into can't, the they customer service. They have nothing to pour into their cup. Yeah. 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 Mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. That's right. Yes. Amen. And investors, Absolutely. business partners are a little different. But the, other, the, the uh, most important thing... The most important thing is not only to understand what each group wants, it's how to get the balance. And you're not going to be right all the time. You're going to be wrong a lot. And but I think you want to be right most of the time. This is when you asked why was he so successful in expediting Chesmar in, in leaps and bounds versus other companies that take so long to get off the ground and launch. I remember when he came into my office one day and drew that and said, this is our business model. This is what we're going off yeah. of. It made so much sense. It was simplified, yeah. but yet it, it makes perfect sense. And it makes that's perfect why. Sense. I mean, I followed this at Lenar as well. Mm -hmm. The um, success is there. So we're going to need you to sign that. We want it autographed. We're going to frame it. And we're going to put it. Uh, we're putting, 
putting shelves <laughs> in the office. My signature. Perfect. And we're gonna we're gonna hang that up because yes. it's something that's important. It's a great business it model. Is. It's something that has made you wildly yeah. successful, and I think it's a good reminder for us. Yes, and so for all office. the listeners, you're welcome. Yeah. We've now just given y'all the the secret tea. On how to be successful like Don Klein. The secret. What is the secret T? This that, right here, apparently. The T. Yeah, the TMT. Well, so the, the T is like the... The drink. No, <laughs> no. It's, it's, it's like the... Well, you're going to say like the, the gossip. Your but kids to explain it. It's um just information. We're, yes. we're spilling the tea. We're, we're spilling the information. The new home industry tea. Okay. Sharing yeah. it with the folks. And then an, another piece of it... Uh, is we want everybody associated with Chesmar to be better for having been associated with Chesmar. And then we define better as better professionally, better mentally, better physically, better financially. Mm -hmm. And we do things for our Chesmarians that help with that. And then they, of course, have to make their own choices in what they do. Yeah. And I think he lives in Breeze. I, I, I can't, you're not going to meet anyone that says otherwise from... Knowing Dawn or working at Chesmar, it's just a better experience. Well, you know him really well. How yes. would you describe Dawn as a leader? So Dawn is 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 this you? So we've known each other. It was two thousand twenty three years. Twenty three years. Yes. We were both younger. We were twenty three years younger. <laughs> He still that looks, makes sense. <laughs> he still looks young and spry. Oh um, yes, right, like you don't. Uh, no, so but direct keeps all of us young. He at Turner Bingham. yes, I do like to do that. She but but Don young. does that as well. So and we'll get into that. But I will say, as a leader, he just truly he listens, and he he has no problem listening, but also saying his piece too, directly. Which is fair, and I think it's how he's able to grow not only himself but people around him all together better, because he's just he he just embodies a good good leader, and he's done a great job with with Thank the company. You. You're it's welcome. It's a good thing I don't get embarrassed, but no, <laughs> I know you don't get embarrassed. I've known you too long. You do not get embarrassed. Well, all these years in the industry, have you ever considered writing a book? Oh, that's um, a yes, good I actually question. did, and I started it, but I am not a writer. Well, but, but you, you can hire somebody mm -hmm. that will just listen to you and listen to all the wonderful things yeah. that you've told us today and compile <gasps> it into I a story that, that you can make edits to and have it published. I I would read your book. Yeah. I would. We need all you listeners to, we're going to we'll ponder start, that. take a poll. Yes, we're going to start a vote that okay. DK needs to write a book. Yeah. Well, so speaking of things that you're going to do in your spare time, I know you're very outdoorsy. For those that do Ooh. not know him, he's extremely outdoorsy and really? adventurous. Yes. <laughs> so you do a, you're an avid hiker, yes? I like to hike. Yes. What is the most, and we're not talking like go down to Sam Houston State Park and hike. We're talking hike, hike, legit. So what is the most... I guess, challenging or adventurous hike you've ever been on? Um, well, I started years ago um, of hiking um, 14ers in Colorado. Yeah. So I can't really pick them out. I've done uh, maybe a dozen or so 14ers, and um, I don't, they're all pretty challenging um, depending on how long the hike is and what elevation you start from. I couldn't pick one out, but they've always been kind of, the highlight of the summer for me. Any particular uh, part of Colorado? Um, well, we usually go to Vail, so yeah. these are within an hour and a half drive okay. of, of Vail. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with a couple of passes in Colorado, like Imogene and uh, Black Bear Pass. Those yeah. are. Are you a hiker, Price? No. I was going to say, I don't no. know this about you. <laughs> I will hike. I mean, if, if you invited me to okay. go on a hike with you, I would. Say absolutely yes. I will yes. go on a hike, with and you he will time. give you all the tips too. I was supposed to go one summer with him and the crew, what? and he was telling me about what socks to purchase. Oh, all well, the you, well, you have to have like yeah, waterproof real socks, things. or you'll you get like you don't need waterproof socks. You don't? No, you just carry an extra pack in case it rains. See, there you go. Oh. Take it from. I've I've not seen waterproof socks. I guess they're available. 
it's more so there's a certain boot. What's funny is I purchased them when yeah. I went to Colorado. <laughs> and, but, but, there's, but there's a certain kind. And I wish I knew I the name know. of them. It's a certain material that's just a yeah. little bit more weatherproof if you were to get yeah. your socks wet just because it gets kind of cold. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of cold. Well, and then that would call blisters and whatnot. But, but of all the hikes I've been on, I can't remember getting rained on. Um, oh, lucky hiker you. Well, in Colorado, the... Uh, afternoons is when the thunderstorms come through if they do come through right and you just get off the mountain before the afternoon you start early in the mm, morning there you go have you ever came across a bear um colorado no really um, right not but i've come across bears in other places canada we're at and, yeah I, I saw the most bears in canada yeah, myself we're in montana a year ago in montana we came across a black bear and oh no close uh, proximity yeah uh, you know maybe or you just <clears> kept it moving away. and y'all we were, were in a cool. four-wheeler vehicle it didn't matter oh okay yeah okay no and most bears run away from you anyway well i mean yeah. most yeah. but i guess you're willing to chance it on the one-off well, unless there's food or babies around yeah Food, if there's, if you see food or babies, yeah. just turn around. Yeah, go <laughs> Just turn around and walk away. <laughs> no, but there's, I mean, there's been people who have been hurt by moose. I was talking about that last night. Moose are terrifying. Yeah, I don't Or the of the buffalo, the bison. Bison? Um, yeah, well, so we, some, but you would go to Yellowstone and you see people around bison all the time. I, and I was one of those, but yeah. we went when all the news articles were coming out about the people being attacked by them and everybody was making me panic Yeah, because there were like three attacks Yeah, and we're in the park and the, the, you have a wooden trail and they're like, stay on the path. And I'm like, well, but I, if I keep going, he's right there just napping. What if he wakes up? Yeah, they're wild. And they're like, don't them. make eye contact. <laughs> just just tiptoe around. So yeah. we have a recording. I sent the kids first. And... Yeah. <laughs> well, I wanted to record them. <laughs> so, but we all came out alive. Yeah. It's good. So, those, those so hiking is your thing. It's what else is your outdoorsy activity? Um, well, we just like to go places that we've never been. You um, do that, yes. We do a lot. We've been to about... 40 different countries. Wow. Where have you not world. been? Where I, well, probably the other 130 or whatever the other number is. But So like, what's what are like the next top yeah. three on your bucket list? Um, well, we're going to go to uh, Norway in August. Um, maybe hit another Scandinavian country while we're there. Um, I want to go to the Middle East at some point mm -hmm. when things calm down. Sure. Um, there's a, some places we'd like to go back to like Italy and New Zealand um, or coal. And then, you know, We'll see. Favorite place that you've traveled to? Um, well, I tell you, my two favorite trips were Switzerland and New Zealand. Um, both very beautiful countries, both a lot of outdoor stuff to do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Great hikes, so, probably in New Zealand. Great. Yeah. The yeah. topography there is just yeah. insane. Yeah. I can see that. That's super cool. So August is your next. Yeah. Will you go hiking this coming summer? Uh, yeah. We'll, we've actually booked a condo in Vail for a, a month. You're just all set. Yeah. Yeah. You're set. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So 2024 mm -hmm. is going to be a new season for mm -hmm. you. So you will have some hiking and yep. some spare time to go traveling because you have officially announced your retirement. Yep. I feel like I'm going to get emotional. Oh, <laughs> We need to have tissues in here. I know. We should have some tissues. You're some retiring. Some yes. tissues. You've made it official. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How so, do you feel about that? Um, apparently, it, I feel some type of way. No, uh, <laughs> you know, it's I interesting um, because when um, I left uh, both Ryland and Lenar, um, the feeling was, what's the next adventure? Yeah. Sure. But I didn't look back. I mean, I left right. a lot of people that you were, I knew. You were ready to go. A lot of people that I liked. And the, what's the next adventure? Right. So, And I don't know what it is yet. Um I know that uh, you know I'll spend more more time doing things that uh, that I like, and um, we'll see. It's an adventure. So okay, well then it's you've announced it, but you're still present at the company until I guess December thirty first. Yeah, the end of this month, and I'm going to oh. actually stay around. I'm going to be in a uh, um, consulting role. Okay, so I'll I'll That's probably wonderful. work a couple days. Oh, maybe good. A day a week. Okay, maybe a day so a you'll week. ease them into yeah. you not being as present. Right. I'm sure they'll appreciate yeah. that. 
Yeah. So wow. I'm going to stay on an advisory board with them. And, okay. Because I couldn't yeah. see you just writing, like December 31st, you punch in the clock and being like, I'm out. Yeah. I couldn't see you just totally. Not yet. Okay. At some okay, point good. that'll happen. Okay. But, Very good. But for now, we're going to, yeah, just uh, ride off in, as I say, ride off into the sunset, but not quite because it's still too hot. You'll come back and make some visits. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm, like you said, I'm sure that they will appreciate that. Yeah. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. I'm sure it'll be good for you, too, to kind yeah. of ease out. Yeah. Ease out and go on your next adventure. Yep. Yes. Are you a J.R.R. Tolkien fan by chance? Um, I've never read any of his uh, books. Are you so familiar probably. with the stories at all? Um, it's fantasy. It is. So, yeah. You, you remind me of the main character. Oh. Just always wanting an adventure yeah. and... Um, Seeing the bright side of things yeah. and just getting into some crazy adventures. That and is definitely Dawn. Uh, yeah. Yes, <clears throat> that is definitely Dawn. Yeah, you kept, sure. you kept saying, what's the next adventure? And I was yeah. like, gosh, he's just, he's reminding me yep. of a J.R.R. Tolkien story. Yep. So. He loves a good adventure. Yep. Yeah. Life is still out there. I like being surprised. I like doing things that I've never done before. And I'm going places that I've never been. And to me, that's fun, entertaining. Is Janet prepared to have you home more? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> to bring she, her in. Yes. We'll, we'll interview her next and yeah, see how yeah. this, <laughs> this new season is going yep. for her. Yep. <laughs> she's, she's like, I don't know if I'm prepared for all these hikes. Exactly. Yep. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yep. Oh. So, but well, it'll be fun. We wish you all the best. Thank You've you. done a phenomenal job. Not only at Chesmar, but just in the industry as a whole. I feel like yeah. the industry yeah. has become better because yeah. of you and what Thank you've you. poured into it. So, actually, actually, I'll tell you, you probably know this, but Jan and I celebrated our 50th anniversary in August. Oh, congratulations. Did you really? Congratulations. So you'll be celebrating your 51st when you are traveling to, where did you say you're going in August? Uh, Norway mm, or Switzerland? Yeah, we will be in Norway on our 51st. Look That's at correct. that. Yeah. Yeah. 51st yep. in Norway. We'll toast to that yes. for you. Yes. Love that. So. Well, oh, thank you. My tears have, um, we've moved on from that quick emotion. <laughs> but but it was, I, I didn't realize I was going to get emotional, but you've meant so much to so many people. So we just wanted to share that and to also have you on so that you could share your story yeah. and People can learn and grow from that. And I'm so glad we had you on. Yeah, well, I, this you. was really, really refreshing. And it's it's nice that people like Dered and Alicia, it, it's nice that there's people yeah. that are going to remain in the industry yeah. to hopefully live out your legacy and the way that you mm -hmm. did things. Because I, I learned so much today from you. And I love it. But it's very say, humbling. Like I said, it's humbling. But you humbling say that to all of your guests. No. No. <laughs> I, I mean, we, we've had some guests where... Um, their their experiences were really different and it was interesting but gosh yours is just so humbling and it's so oh, what's a good word I don't, I don't know it's just it truly it's is a legacy it's a very heartfelt story and um you know in this business it's it, it can be cutthroat in this business and there's some people in this business that um are in the business only for if you flip that over they're right. only in it for the money yeah. yes i don't deal with them and yep. to hear you talk and tell your story today was just, it was very nice for me to hear it. And yep. I really appreciate it. And I, I said this before, but I know that our viewers are really going to appreciate yep. it yeah. too. Just learning about you and yep. what you've done, your leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, I cannot wait to frame that and put it on the wall. I know. <laughs> no, there, but there's, uh, I've met some phenomenal people. And most of the people in this industry, in this business are top notch and they're ethical and they're, yeah. they're friendly and they're straightforward and they want to help. Um, yes. You know, a lot of people have helped me in my career, and hopefully, I've helped a lot of people as well. I know, so, I know you have helped a lot of people. Yeah, there's much more of that than there is the cutthroat stuff. There is, and the longer you're in yeah. this industry, the more you get to see that and experience that, For and sure. that's what I think has sustained so many of us, um, and and made it worth. Yeah. Well, we always say you, you never burn a bridge in this right. industry. Right. So if you are only about the money, if you are very cutthroat, it's yeah. apparent really quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the people that are like you and like me and like Durrett that are humble, that really want to help people, um, there's a reason that we do this. Yeah. And we've been doing it for so long. 
So yeah. like-minded. Yes. It was wonderful to talk to you, yeah. Don. Well, thank, thank you. you. Oh, wait, I have one more question. Will you stay in Houston, do you think? Um, probably, yes. Unless we have more really ugly summers. Oh. oh, well, okay, yeah, summers are tough, but you can vacation during that time, so stay put. Yes, okay. <laughs> that way we, we can we track you down pretty move easy. Out of Houston. No, don't move out of right. Houston. Okay, I, that just dawned on me with you being retired. Yeah. So, okay, thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Thank you, Dawn.